Hey everybody, this is your co-host, Zach Briggs. We wanted to take a minute and let you know that this episode ran longer than we would like. Our goal is to have episodes that are around 30 minutes each. This is difficult to do, and there's so much good information that we'd like to share with you. Please stick with us as we try to find a careful balance between the depth of information and the length of our videos. One thing that we'll be doing in the future are deep dive episodes. These episodes will be done with the goal of providing as much information as possible on a topic. They won't have the time limits, and they'll be more complete. We felt this was better because you can choose to dig deeper into a topic if you want to at your own pace. Please let us know if you would like us to do a deep dive on a topic. You can do so at our website, DelphiMystics.com, or by email, by emailing mystics at DelphiMystics.com. With that, we'll return you to your episode. Hello, and welcome to Delphi Mystics, your weekly podcast that demystifies the dark arts of Delphi development. Uh, my name is Jim McKeith, and joining me somewhere around here, we have uh, Zach Briggs and Dave Nottage. So we'll assume I'm pointing in the right directions here. I don't know where they're at. And we're here to talk to you about some everything Delphi. We're going to start with Delphi news. So I guess the first big Delphi news I'm going to take, this is version 10.3.2 is now available. 10.3.2 is uh, the second update or second release of, uh, or second update release? I don't know what the term is. Anyway, it's release 10.3.2 for Rio. It adds uh, Mac OS 64 and a number of other improvements, Windows 64. Uh, so we scroll down here, Mac OS 64 application support for Delphi, uh, C++ 17 for Windows 64-bit, C++ uh, LSP, which is the language. Oh, come on, Dave, help me out. What, what's LSP? Uh, language service something. <laughs> language service provider, that's what it is, language service provider. Uh, this is part of a number of the improvements that are going on in C++ to uh, improve the code completion and, and stuff like that. Uh, we're going to get one in Delphi eventually as well, if you look in the full roadmap. A number of RAD server improvements, Delphi RAD server wizards, and Android push notifications now supports Firebase, since Google's moved everything to that. Um, FireMonkey for Linux is now officially part of it as well, which is pretty cool. I did a webinar on that a while back. Neat stuff if you want to do GUI in Linux with FireMonkey. Uh, there's a little video in there at the bottom you can check out. So let's see, I already talked to Mac OS 64. RAD server management console, a lot of big RAD server improvements. So if you're not using RAD server yet, take a look at that. If you are using RAD server, definitely take a look at that. Um, and then Google Play Store Android extension. I think you're going to talk about this, aren't you, Zach? Yeah, uh, sure. Dave. Oh, no. It's, <laughs> oh, Dave is. talking about that. Dave's yeah. talking about that. So, so we'll pretend like I said, take it away, Dave. <laughs> so uh, those that are um, still developing uh, Android applications for 32-bit, as Jim mentioned, that you can get a, uh, an extension, a Python extension with Google Play Store. Uh, there's um, some details here that uh, Serena gives you to uh, to have a request that extension. You fill it out and you get a follow-up email that may ask you some additional questions. So also uh, mention the August roadmap update outlines oh, yeah. that Android 64-bit will be available from Delphi 10.3.3. And also you can see from the roadmap that 10.4 is coming out early 2020, so Android 64-bit will be also available there. And I think that's it for Android 64-bit. Yeah. I, I will comment that people have been submitting for extensions and receiving them. Um, a couple of people said they didn't receive them, but then they reapplied and got it. So it does work. You can get extensions. Just uh, follow the steps, and you may need to follow up with them if it doesn't work the first time. All right. So uh, I wanted to touch on that the end of life is coming up for Windows 7, as much as we're all very sad to see that go. That was a, a terrific OS. It was built like a battleship. Yeah, but uh, you know now we uh, we need to start looking more toward Windows 10 and our integrations with that. There is a Windows 10 modernization webinar series coming up uh, that should touch on a lot of the advantages of integrating Windows 10 and how to move your projects forward with Windows 10. Yeah, we had the first one already. Um, actually, by the time this podcast goes on, we'll probably have had uh, two or three of these. But we had uh, Serena talking about 
user interface, uh, user experience principles. This isn't specifically Windows 10, but uh, enterprise connectors, cool technology, uh, high DPI, native apps, um, so on and so forth. So quite a few in here. Come check this out. You'll definitely find something in here you want to, to, do, to join us for. Uh, I'm going to talk about LearnDelphi.org. Actually, I'll start on the homepage here. So LearnDelphi.org is a new project that Embarcadero is launching with the uh, developer community. And it's a, to be a one-stop shop for anybody that wants to, uh, for students or professionals that are learn, want to learn to program with Delphi. Uh, right now we're setting it up and getting some of the content on there, but the eventual goal is that we'll be able to turn over to the community and the community will keep continuing populating with content. Uh, we'll provide licenses, information from doc wiki and stuff like that. So if you want to learn to program or you have a friend that wants to learn to program, you can come out here, uh, check out uh, Community Edition. It's a great resource if you're new to programming. Uh, free download. We'll eventually have academic licenses on here as well. But we have a mascot contest going on right now. And here's some of our mascots we've got here. So come out here. You can uh, vote on your favorite just by giving it a like. Some of these uh, various degrees. I think this one right here is winning. This one's by my daughter. Um, this, one, this one's actually kind of cool when you think about it because that's the uh, Delphi uh, assignment operator there. <laughs> and I like, kind of like this one here, the, the B, or the, the uh, I want to say right B, but they're not Bs, that they're yeah. platform comp 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 competition. <laughs> And then if you still don't have enough news yet, if you're just like, oh, I need more news, if you're not aware of it, DelphiMagazine.com is kind of the new destination for all the news feeds related to Delphi development. The uh, Delphi feeds is basically falling out of maintenance for various reasons, and so Delphi Magazine is the new destination for that. So if there's things on here you're not aware of, you can certainly let them know. Code Partners, Malcolm Groves down in Australia, he's actually the one that put this together. It's got a RAD server backend and it uses enterprise connectors to plug it all together. Uh, they have a really cool webinar coming up here uh, somewhere uh, on Code Partners. I should have had that up here. Is there a uh, spot on there where we could sign up for mailing? For email from them? Yeah. Uh, newsletter. Oh, right there. There we go. It is. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they don't have it yet. <sighs> You can do RSS. Yeah, they have RSS. You can get a single RSS feed. You can follow them on Twitter and get all the tweets from Delphi Magazine here. Um, anyway, this is pretty nice. I really like it. It's got a good source of information, and uh, it's got a nice interface to it as well. Uh, CoPartners has a really cool webinar coming up, which I was going to try and find a link for it, but I don't see it. If you uh, scroll through here on using Docker, so they have a... Um, if I remember correctly, it's like they had somebody had a really old legacy Delphi app system and they're like, we need to update this and we hear microservices are cool and they're like, okay. And so they helped them use microservices to take this existing monolithic Delphi application and turn it into uh, microservices deployed through Docker. So container technology, cool stuff. And with that, I think we're going to go on to the next part of our session. Is there any other news we didn't get through there? I think we got it all. Yeah, we got all the news, I think. All the news that's fit to print. <laughs> so now we're going to talk about why we choose Delphi, or maybe also, I guess we have to do an intro of who we are. Yeah. Maybe that's what first. So yeah, uh, people need to know us from Adam, you know? Yeah. So I've been talking a lot here, but I'll go ahead and finish up talking. My name is Jim McKeith. I'm a chief developer advocate at Embarcadero Technologies. Been using Delphi for years. Uh, I'll talk more about that later. And uh, it's one of those things that was interesting. I've been always uh, had my own podcast, my own blog about Delphi, uh, speaking at conferences and stuff like that. And eventually it worked out that now that's the main part of my job is doing the things I used to do for vacation time. So that's who I am. That's why I'm here. Zach, how about you? Um, I am chief development officer for a company called Rapid Kinetics and what we specialize in is helping clients take their ideas from concept to, you know, completion. Uh, so we find oftentimes people have ideas for either mobile apps or electronics or, or, or various other things. And we're able to, to help them do that uh, through various applications of technology. We reach for Delphi a lot for that kind of stuff. And I'm also, I guess what I would consider a Delphi legacy. Um, 
my history with Delphi goes clear back to almost the beginning, uh, mainly because uh, I, I had a brother that was very good at fostering such things. So we'll go into that more later. All right. Uh, with that, let's uh, let's hand it over to Dave. Hi, I'm Dave Nottage. I'm an independent software consultant. I have uh, one continuous client here in Adelaide at present. I do two or three days of work a week, work a week for them. And I have uh, a, a number of um, jobs that I get uh, occasional and uh, many requests that are ad hoc and mostly in Delphi. Uh, I get a lot of requests from uh, my, through my website, delphiworlds.com, and some I just get through word of mouth through other Delphi developers. Thanks, Zach. So right. let's, uh, let's get into the meat and potatoes here. Yeah, why we choose Delphi. And I'll go ahead and turn off my screen now because that's not very interesting right now. It'll just be <laughs> us. All right, so um, I think I'll, I'll lead this off and, and you guys are welcome to uh, ask questions or chime in if you want. But uh, yeah. why I choose Delphi is usually, uh, it came down to an easy use thing for a while, but uh, at this point it's, it's advantageous to do so. So when I started with Delphi, way back Delphi 1, Delphi 3, Delphi 5, I always skipped iterations for some reason. And I can tell you that um, with every iteration up through 7, uh, I, I could almost literally feel like energy, you know, like all this, this capability or, or, or power uh, that I had accessible right through Delphi. And so I, I highly enjoyed developing with it. I, I had an interest in development before that. I got introduced to Delphi by my brother, who is also a Delphi developer, or actually was, he's retired at this point from that and uh, works in the healthcare industry now. But, uh, you know, he was writing products uh, for Mitsubishi and, you know, various other car companies and whatnot for CRM. And so he introduced me to Delphi and I was like, oh, this is really cool. I want to see what I can do. I also want to see how I can impress my brother with it, you know, <laughs> and, uh, but you know, that kind of, uh, spawned from there. And then for a while it was like Delphi kind of fell out of favor, although I kept reaching for it because it was so much easier to use. And, uh, I had all these components that made it so easy for me to just do something and do it quick and get it done. And right not have to spend five hours going, well, I want to inter you know, interface with that over there, but I'm going to spend the next 35 minutes setting up my wind socket in order to be able to do that so that I can you know, work with this protocol and do this. But, uh, you know, it came back, you know, I, w I had been doing a lot of PHP development and I had been doing a lot of C sharp development and it, it really came back around with the XE series and the re-release, so to speak, of, of Delphi. And I have really enjoyed uh, every aspect of developing with Rad Studio since. And at this point, uh, I've got, oh, I don't even know how many apps anymore out there that, that use Delphi. And mm -hmm. I can't imagine trying to do that any other way. I maintain one set of code. I have all these connectors that I can use. I have all of these components that have just over a decade worth of, of polishing and buffing so that they work properly. When I deal with, with cities and, you know, governments and I, I deal with educational institutions and they're using legacy technology and they need it converted. Well, I've got the best of both worlds. I can work with that AS 400 system at the same time as working with that MySQL database or that MS SQL database. And I can pull that information over and make it available to them. Mm -hmm. with no fear that, I mean, I go into those things and they tell me, well, you may not want to work with us because you know, we have a DB2, no problem, I got this. And, and I feel confident in being able to say that because of Delphi. So there, rant over. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess Jim. Me? Okay. So actually I did a blog post a while back about why I uh, keep choosing Delphi. And I, similar, I was... Uh, I used Charles Pascal years ago. So I started out programming in basic, but ba actually before basic, I was doing batch files in MS-DOS. Uh, and then I learned basic and oh my goodness, the ability to actually, I remember when I first learned that I could edit a batch file. Cause at first I was doing all my batch files with copy con and just typing them out linear. And if you made a mistake, you had to rewrite the whole thing from scratch. <laughs> uh, 
so it was it, it was evolution from there. Turbo Pascal though was a huge leap forward from from uh, basic for me, and used Turbo Pascal for a long time, loved it, and then it was I think I didn't start using Delphi till Delphi two right before Delphi three came out. Oh, those turtle graphics though. <laughs> <laughs> And there was, I did so much. I mean, with Turbo Pascal, I just was, I felt like there was nothing I couldn't do with it, right? I mean, it was just everything I wanted to do, I was getting done. And it, interestingly, I wrote a program that uh, would go into the, the memory, the video memory of an MS DOS computer and download the font out of memory and then could modify the font and then re upload it back into video memory. And so I had a few different ones that were kind of fun. One of them I did would go download that and then flip all the font bitmaps upside down and then re upload it again. So all the fonts on your screen would be upside down. And I released that. I thought it was kind of cool. And then, like five years later, I think it was, or maybe two years later, I don't know, I was talking to, I met uh, a friend of a friend. Mm -hmm. And he's like, man, your name sounds really familiar. And I'm like, oh, really? He's like, yeah. And then we're chatting, and then after a while, he's like, oh, my goodness, you wrote Flip Font. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I wrote that a while ago. He's like, oh, the bank I work at has that installed in, like, the, the cool tools area that people, you know, aren't, aren't supposed to be there, but we do for fun. And I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, that's a great little gag. <laughs> actually, it's really funny. Somebody actually reverse engineered that for uh, Descent to flip all the text upside down on the macros. Uh-huh. And it was that same, I think it was your same library that they did it with. Yeah, I don't know. Could be. I, it, anyway, it, it wasn't that complicated. It just, I love being able to, you know, if you hear about some bit of technology or something, you know, it's like, oh, and you go do it, right? It gives you full access to that. Uh, Tropas, when I moved Tropas Pascal to Delphi, it was the same sort of thing. Um, you know, I was new to Windows programming and new to the Windows platform really as well. Uh, Windows 3.1 was kind of, you know, you know, used it occasionally, but then really when Windows 95 is when we started when using Windows a lot more. And anything I'd hear about, any APIs on Windows, right, I could just go call those APIs. I could intercept Windows messages. All that stuff that was part of being a Windows developer was totally accessible to Delphi. And that was something I really loved about it is that I had this, a high productive layer, right? Where we can mm -hmm. drag and drop components and stuff like you're talking about, Zach. But at the same time, you know, when you need to, you can reach down and grab, you know, mem bits of memory or, or the APIs or whatever you need to do. And so it gives you that full range. Near uh, I know a lot of people, what's that? Near metal layer. Yeah, exactly. That's what I always say. You reach down and touch the metal is what I always call it. Call it. But the, I know a lot of people that would use like Visual Basic to prototype their application, right? And they'd build the GUI interface and some basic functionality, but then they'd rewrite it all in Visual C++ because they wanted perform yeah. access to APIs and all that stuff. And I'm like, why not just do it in Delphi and, you know, be done with it? Uh, and I, a lot of people that were Visual, ba Visual C++, Visual Basic developers, I introduced them in Delphi and they totally switched. But So for the longest time, I would tell people why every other programming language sucked and they should only use Delphi. Um, but then as life happens, I spent time using a lot of other programming languages. I've been around the block. I've actually taught classes in Java and C sharp. And I, I did, did some time with objective C. It was really painful. I haven't used Swift really much yet. Done a lot with JavaScript. There's some cool things about JavaScript, but I found that even when my full-time job was doing C sharp development and I was, uh, you know, doing a teaching a class in the weekend on Android development with Java, I'd come home and if there was something I wanted to write, I would write it with Delphi because I could get things done quicker and it just was easier to get stuff done with. And so, uh, yeah, big fan of Delphi. I have been for a long time and I'm excited to be, you know, it's part of my job to work with it. So that's, that's exciting. How about you, Dave? Okay. Uh, well, my beginnings were, um, way back in the dim dark ages of high school. I actually started with a, a programming language called APL. I don't know if you guys have heard of that. I have heard of APL. That's the one that looks like you're swearing at it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Quiet. You know, there's all these little symbols in trying to work out what each one does. Uh, but it was so powerful. Uh, you could write, you know, this complete program to calculate, uh, you know, a whole bunch of uh, values in a matrix uh, just with a couple of characters of code not lines of code, characters of code. Right. So then uh, uh, they moved us on to uh, basic. Like I said, it was in high school. Moved us on to basic, and I was getting a pretty good grip on that. And uh, 
then I um, came across Pascal, and I can't remember exactly uh, how I did, but uh, I re- the, the main thing was that I fell in love with this language. So uh, I started using uh, Turbo Pascal on a, a CPM computer. Uh, it's uh, the brand is, is a homemade brand here in Australia called the Micro B, and I started developing programs on uh, in Pascal on this computer. And then, uh, and that, well, that was, like I said, Turbo Pascal. So uh, then I mo- moved up in the world and got a Windows computer and got Turbo Pascal for DOS on that. And then I moved on to, uh, so I worked with that for a while, and then I moved on to Turbo Pascal for Windows. I thought, oh, you know, here's this new operating system, graphical operating system, loved it. I wanted to develop it for it. So uh, I got Turbo Pascal for Windows and uh, you know, got this box with all these books in it, and uh, you know how th- I'm sure you remember how thick they were. Oh, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. And I, I'm trying to get my head around this idea of objects. Yeah, what the heck is an object? Yeah, I remember that too. Actually, the whole it's like, oh, why would you want to do that? That's crazy. Oh, what's I an object? Know, and what's a stream? There. What's a stream? Uh, I remember had, having this problem getting my head around this idea of what a stream was. Anyway. So um, this was like heaven. I think for me, uh, programs using objects and also be able to target windows. So then, uh, um, uh, Visual Basic came around, came along though, and I thought, oh well, uh, Turbo Pascal for Windows can't quite do what you know some of the some of the things that Visual Basic could do. So uh, I was um, using Visual Basic for a while, and of course that things all changed in 1995 and. No, I won't come out, and I was back in heaven again. So, um, of course, uh, there's a natural progression from uh, Delphi 1 uh, through to, uh, and I've used just about every version uh, that's ever been released, and it's just uh, so easy to uh, develop applications. Of course, now, since uh, XE2, I think it was, Jim, um, you can start developing for other platforms. Yeah. Now you can do the whole lot. Uh, you know, Linux, Mac OS, iOS, Android, and it's just it's just a different world. Yeah, yeah. That's why I chose Delphi, or choose, still choose Delphi too. So, did anybody actually use XE one? Just wondering. Uh, I'm not I'm not I trying might, to rip on the Mercadero. I just I don't know anybody that started in XE one. <laughs> I used XE. Um, I remember. I remember going to the release. Uh, Anders Olsen mm-hmm. was doing a presentation at like a local library or something like that. And there was a good turnout, probably 30 people there and he was showing off XE. Um, but I don't remember what I was using it for. I'm trying to remember. I, yeah, I was working at a company. I worked at a company where we were doing Delphi development full time at that point. Mm-hmm. I was using it. So yeah. Used XE for sure. I think the only version of Delphi. Gosh, I I never I I find other versions of Delphi, which is kind of interesting to fire that up from time to time, uh, just for that for nostalgic sake, you know, see how far it's come. But uh, I think I've used every pretty much every version of Delphi. Yeah. Is right. my audio sound okay to you guys? Uh, Sorry. I think we had a bit of a connection glitch for a second there, but uh, it's the audio itself is back to being good. So. All right. Um, it, for some reason, you guys are a little crackly to me, but I think it must be my end. Uh, yeah, it, like I said, you sound loud and clear over here. All right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, I don't it's think the- I have anything else to add to it. I did ask my brother... Uh, what made him choose Delphi mm-hmm. uh, about that today. I'm like, Hey, I'm going to ask him. What a good idea. Um, the answer was not as profound as I was expecting. Uh, <laughs> it was somewhere along the lines of, well, that's what they taught me in seventh grade. And so it was easy because I already knew that language and the IDE was phenomenal and had great performance, something like that. And I'm just over here going, wow, I expected something more like deliberative. You know? <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah. 
Yeah, you know, and it's interesting. It sounds like all three of us and a lot of other Delphi firms I've talked to have uh, spent time using other programming languages, right? So it's not like it's we're using Delphi only because it's the only thing we know, right? The, the old adage, if your only tool is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Yeah. You know, it, it's not that our only tool is Delphi. It's we've gone around and looked at them and it's like, well, you know what? I want to get stuff done. So I'm going to use the best one out there. Yeah. Well, I had a crack at Xamarin. Good. And, uh, I was severely disappointed coming from a coming from using Delphi because uh, I found that uh, in order to uh, create a project for iOS and be able to compile it for Android, you need to create another project. Mm. So, of course, the advantage with Delphi is that you can create a single project and compile for both platforms. So, yep. Yeah, uh, I mean, you still got code sharing in Xamarin, but that was just a big draw. I don't know if it's changed since then, but it was a big drawback for me. Put me right off it. You yeah. know, there's been a few times I've seen other tools that are like, oh my goodness, it does this. I'm like, well, I've been doing that in Delphi for years, but I'll go check it out. And it, like, I've checked out with Xamarin as well. And there were some things that's like, okay, that's kind of cool, but it's like, it's not as good. I yeah. mean, I guess if you really like C Sharp, which I don't yeah. mind C Sharp. C Sharp's got some nice things about it for sure. Mm -hmm. But as far as productivity goes, you know, it just didn't hold a candle to Delphi. And so interesting story, they've added Xamarin Forms, which is a way to build a, uh, a shared user interface across platforms. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, that looks interesting. I looked a little bit into it. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to hire a consultant. And so I went out and looked for uh, someone that was an expert in Xamarin Forms. And I said, I want you to build a simple application in Xamarin Forms and record the process of you building it. And like, I wouldn't build that in Xamarin Forms. I'd rewrite it twice. I'd do it once in, in uh, Objective-C and once in Android. I'm like, really? And he goes, yeah, they just, it's too much trouble using Xamarin Forms. So if it's not like an incredibly complex app, I would totally do it twice because it's just not worth it. And it which leads me to an interesting uh, aside. I was doing a presentation one time for, I can't remember what version of, of Delphi coming out. And I was at a... Uh, place that I was doing a presentation. I was showing, okay, here's how you take a picture with the camera and here's how you do GPS and all this stuff with Android. And uh, it must have been the Android release. And there's this guy in the front row and he's looking kind of concerned and finally raises his hands and he goes, I've been developing with Android for a while now and I see you doing all these things, but I don't see you writing a lot of code. And everybody else in the room kind of, oh yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm like, yeah, that, that's really the beauty of this is that you you can do a lot without having to write a lot of code, but at the same time, and this is something I get guilt, all guilty of, is I do the, the, the demos that don't show that you can write code with Delphi, and um, yeah, you can still write the code. Like I said, it's that you have the two layers of productivity. You can drop the components on the form, you can you know, set some properties and some uh, things like that, or you can reach down and uh, grab all the APIs. And, that, and the cool thing is, that was the thing I loved about Windows, and I realized I'm gonna rant again, but you could do the same thing on Android and iOS, right? So uh, iPhone came out with the touch, the touch uh, thing for your fingerprint sensor. And uh, Olaf did a webinar at CodeRage showing, hey, here's how you reach down and grab those APIs to use them on iOS, right? You can reach in and grab any Java jar file on Android and import it and use it that way. So, you know, there's a lot of things that are imported and easy to use, but then if you don't have those, you can still go out and grab them, so. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I mean that's uh, that's one of the joys of Delphi. Is I had somebody one time ask me, they're like, "Why don't you organize your Delphi code so that you have like uh, your interface layer, and then you have your you know, your, your kind of like business logic, and then you have your UI layer?" I'm like, "Well, because I don't need to dive into the interfaces for this app. That's all done for me. You know, I just I just need some logic, and, and I need my UI. I, I don't need." this extra stuff that, that goes in the middle. And, and you can do that with, with uh, a lot of your, uh, your apps that are a little more straightforward. And I have the, the added advantage of, uh, on a weekly basis, I touch at least six or seven different languages because I, you know, I've got clients that have VB, I've got clients that have C Sharp, I have clients that, uh, that are working with PHP and you know, I, I'm working with microcontrollers on a weekly basis and stuff. And as a result, I can kind of see each piece and I can see pros and cons with all of them, but my chosen tool at the end of the day will always be, uh, at least for, for my foreseeable future, Delphi. 
um, you know, I'm, I'm over here hoping that, oh, they're going to embed microcontroller logic in Delphi because that means one less IDE switch that I have to do on a weekly basis. But I mean, I've worked with them all. And what I've noticed is uh, uh, Ted, uh, an individual that I, I work with on a daily basis also, he, he went to a, a development conference recently that was focused on mobile development. And there was a bunch of Xamarin guys there and everyone's coming up and they're like, you know, hey, uh, you know, what do you program in? And uh, he's like, Delphi. And uh, they're like, huh. And they're like, and he's like, what do you program in? Xamarin. But they weren't like Xamarin, like waving the flag, happy and proud to be a Xamarin developer. It was like, Xamarin. <laughs> you know? And then, uh, then they both looked at each other and so they're like, well, we can all agree on one thing. And I'm not going to say the name of the company, but they're like, so-and-so sucks. <laughs> 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 Which is the third option there that, uh, that had almost no representation at this thing. But what I've noticed is um, most of the issues that I run into when I'm doing like cross-platform development are platform-specific issues anyway. Oh, yeah. So even if I was developing against it, if I've run into an issue, it, it's likely an issue that I would have ran into if I was doing native. And so, you know, and that's, that is another thing to know. Uh, I choose Delphi over Xamarin strictly on the fact that it compiles native binaries. I don't have to include .NET in order to get my platform to run on a mobile device. Yeah. I, I, I try really hard to not specifically diss other platforms and languages. Um, uh, everyone of them's got their merits. Yeah, everyone has their merits. And it's easy to sometimes point out the, 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 the failings. And that from time to time, people are like, uh, sales will come to me. I'm like, can you do a benchmark that shows that Delphi is better than X? And I'm like, yeah, but I don't want to. And this is why, because somebody else could probably do the reverse of that. And then we're in an arms race to see who can, you know, build the better benchmark. Yeah. So I try to avoid that. But I, I, I can tell you, though, that I was in, uh, gosh, I'm trying to remember where I was at. I was traveling somewhere and they took me to uh, one of the sales guys said, Oh, I ran into my friend the other day at lunch and he's just started doing some Xamarin development. And I told him you'd come by and talk to him. He's like, okay. So I come by and he was running a C sharp. He was like the development manager and he had like 50 C sharp developers working for him. Mm. And they're doing um, all server side back end stuff. And the CTO came to him and said, we need a mobile app. And he's like, okay, um, I'll look into that. And so he did some research and said, oh, Xamarin uses C Sharp. So, um, you know, that makes sense. We should do that. So he gave himself a month to that he himself would dive into Xamarin and said, okay, I just want to build a basic REST client application with Xamarin. And, you know, that should be enough time for me to get the feel of it and decide if this is going to be a good, good fit. And I started smiling. And he's like, this isn't going well. I'm almost three weeks into this and I'm just not getting anywhere. I'm getting really frustrated. And I'm like, I could build an app and deploy it to your phone in five minutes with Delphi that's a, a REST compliant. And he's like, no. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll do it. And I, I was actually, um, I didn't know if I could do it in five minutes. <laughs> I knew I could do it quickly. But uh, it, was, it was close to five minutes, even though I was stopping and explaining and showing what I was doing and stuff like that. But, you know, I just went out and grabbed the REST endpoint and boom, boom, boom. And there it is and deployed it onto his phone. And he was like taking pictures and sending it to his boss the whole time. It was, it was crazy. So, yeah, you know, it's easy. And to be fair, I'm sure there's a Xamarin developer out there that could point out something you could do better with Xamarin than you couldn't do with Delphi. And I'm okay with that. But I found, and, and, and to be honest, there are times I will, I can just see there's times that even I would want to use another tool, right, in combination with Delphi, right? I don't say it has to only be Delphi all the time, but for the majority of t situations, Delphi is the answer I'm looking for. So I actually wrote a, uh, wrote an app in C sharp about four months ago and the app was intended for my own personal use. And I did it mainly to continue to polish my C sharp skills since I have to deal with it constantly. Mm -hmm. And, uh, about a month later, somebody else, uh, had a need that this app would fill. And so, and they're a friend of mine. I'm like, Oh, here, I'll check out my, uh, my app I wrote over here. I'm like, use that. And they're like, oh, this is awesome. Can I put it on my Mac? <laughs> and I kind of went, well, I mean, I guess you could. You'd have to install .NET and, you know, have that bundled libraries. And 
And then uh, they're like, I thought you did cross-platform development. I'm like, well, I didn't write it in Delphi. And they're like, what were you thinking, man? <laughs> <I'm> like, <sighs> but uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it amazes me the turn times on, uh, on doing Delphi apps. And, you know, I would love to do, and, and, and if we can find anybody, uh, definitely anybody that hears this that wants to be involved in this, uh, email us at, at mystics at, at delphimystics.com. But uh, I would love to do a round table on, uh, on comparing and contrasting various IDEs that people are using and, and what people feel like their highlights, their IDEs are. Yeah, I, that, that would be great. I agree. Because like I said, I, I, don't, I by no means believe that Delphi is the only tool out there to use. Um, sometimes you need a flathead, sometimes you need a Phillips. Yep. And it's, yeah. just, it's just the way life is. I mean, uh, and you know, there are some IDEs that are kind of like uh, somebody used one of those weird three point bits and you know, <laughs> Yeah. But uh, you know, there's purpose for all of them. There is. And we could debate the benefits of Phillips versus Flathead, but I think it's better to just say, I have a big tool belt. <laughs> all right. So, uh, so, yeah, let's go ahead and do the tips and the jobs. And then I yeah. think, you know, it might be a good idea if anybody's actually stuck around through the whole podcast here, we might talk about kind of our plans, what we have going forward on this. Okay. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Right. So I'm going to share my screen because I brought up the uh, page about the tip you have to share. Could you tell me what tip you're going to share, Zach? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, my, my notes actually uh, <laughs> idled down at this point. So, ah. um, one of the, the, this is an essential tip to me. Uh, if you're an existing Delphi developer and you upgraded to 10, uh, 10 2, 3, the, or I'm sorry, 10, 3, 2. <laughs> 10, 3, 2, yeah. Uh, if you upgraded, then you switched, if you're using notifications, you switched from using Google Cloud Messaging to Fire Cloud Messaging. And Fire there are a couple of things uh, that I noticed uh, in that transition that I, I think need to be called out and, and pointed out so that you can make that transition a little more smoothly. And one of those things is when you bring your app in at first, very first thing that you need to do is import your Google services, uh, JSON. You do that by going to your project options, by going to uh, application services, and right there you'll see where you can import it. And uh, be mindful that this does import based on configuration, it pairs. So you know if you bring it in or debug and you switch to release, you're probably gonna have to import your stuff again if you've got a, uh, in, like in my case, I actually have a separate release uh, setup mm -hmm. and I do a, uh, debug. So for me, it was kind of handy that they're separated, but you do need to keep that in mind. Uh, additionally, some a couple other things that I noticed in the import is go into your Android uh, platform target, go down to your libraries and just reset those to defaults because there's going to be a bunch of broken libraries in your project. Oh. Um, it will clean that up. Uh, I did find where Mac OS had an erroneous platform target. I just deleted that because I wasn't using that for that app anyway. But just keep that in mind because uh, until you do that, oh, and one other thing, in your project options, your icons, set your notification icons and your accent color. That way you can compile and everything deploys smoothly. If you do those couple of steps, it, uh, it really helps your transition. Yeah, I remember you, you brought that up and you, had, you get an error message. I'm like, ah, that's a good question. But yeah, we, I'm glad you got that figured out. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's not a big deal. It's really easy to do. It, it took me, I imported another project today and it took me less than 10 minutes to go through and, and just clean those things up really quick. And uh, I think it took me a little longer just because I had to resize a few icons for notifications. I, I, I think Delphi does a good job of hiding some of the complexity, mm -hmm. but you still need to know kind of what's going on behind the scenes at the yeah. same time. You know, um, yeah. it, it's, I know that there are other tools out there and actually Idera just got a uh, Lanza, which is like a, a low code or zero code solution for building mobile apps. Mm -hmm. And I talked to Otnis about, you know, how Lanza, you know, it's felt like it was like, is that competing with Delphi? And he said, Lanza is for people that don't want to write code. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Delphi is people that want to write code to get things done. So there's things you can do quickly with Lanza and other low code solutions out there. Um, but there's things you can't do with them because yeah. you don't have all that 
access because it completely abstracts all that away. Whereas Delphi, it, it is about the right layer, le level of abstraction, right? So you yep. can be productive, but then when you need to, you can still uh, do things. So for example, before 10.3.2 came out, if you wanted to, you could manually switch to Firebase instead of Google Cloud Messaging. Mm. Which is great, right? But that's nice that it has it built in now. Uh, makes it much easier and much better support, but it, it's nice that you have that flexibility to change that up if you need to. So definitely awesome tip. Hey, uh, since my notes are kind of offline at this point, uh, can you run through the jobs really quick? I sure can. Um, I'm going to switch over to, Oh, I guess I'll do that. That works. <laughs> so uh, jobs Upwork. If you're not familiar with that Upwork it used to be called, um, I can't, what it used to be called. It had a different name before. But it's one of those um, freelancing sites that you can go out to and you can register as a freelancer. And I've been posting jobs out there and from time to time, got a kind of really talented developers I've been working with. So, and there's other Delphi jobs out there being posted. So if you're looking for Delphi jobs or looking for Delphi developers, that is a good place to go with. Uh, Idera kind of uses Upwork as a standard for when we need some uh, temporary workers, people to just take care of a simple project or something like that. Uh, you can use that. Fiverr is another one, and actually I've hired quite a few people on Fiverr. Usually Fiverr is where I go to when I want to hire somebody to like make like a bit of artwork. So yeah. uh, the mascots I made, I, I had some entries in the mascot contest. I can't draw. <laughs> yeah. But I hired somebody on Fiverr that could, and I told them what I wanted, and they made it. So, And there's Delphi developers on there as well. But uh, I think Upwork is probably a better solution for the kind of person you're looking for for uh, involved contracts. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's see. Zach, you have four job postings here. Analyst in Measurement Services Corporations, or AMS, in Knoxville, Tennessee. Do you remember anything about them? Yep. They're just, these are all just looking for Delphi developers. Okay. Digital Intelligence D BV in Denver, Colorado. Uh, Hermitage Infotech in Hern Hern Herndon. H-E-R-N-D-O-N, Herndon, Virginia. And Stout Systems Developments in Southfield, Michigan. So those are all over your neck of the woods. Uh, well, I mean, Colorado's not. But, uh, oh, yeah, Colorado's <laughs> closer to me. That's right. Yeah. Uh, anybody interested in, in the job openings from them are welcome to email us at jobs at delphimystics.com, and we'll shoot you back the information related to those and so you can get a hold of them. Yeah, you can probably find them uh, doing some Googling too. Yep, if you definitely. Uh, I think actually a lot of them had the – the jobs also listed on their website if you want to like the career section. Yep. I've noticed my, my blue screen's doing some weird stuff and I keep like phasing in and out here. This is hey, hey, it's a first episode. We get a pass on a lot of this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, and I know actually you don't have them on here, but gateway ticketing where Nick Hodges works, they're like almost always hiring. And um, not only get to work with Nick Hodges there, but they have a lot of other developers you might recognize in the community and white orbit is another place. I used to work at white orbit. Uh, Anders Olson works there now, along with a lot of other um, Delphi developers. You know, a number of MVPs work there as well. So uh, they're both typically are hiring Delphi developers. Excellent. Excellent. So uh, and they work, you can work remote for both of them as well. I think the one for Hermitage is also remote. Um, remote. I probably should have made a note on that. Yeah, interesting story. When um, I uh, got my job here in Barcadero, when David sent me an email. So I, had, I met with David years ago and I said, I want to come work for Mercadero as a developer advocate or evangelist. Thanks for what we're calling it at the time. And he's like, well, we don't have any openings right now, but if we ever do, I'll keep you in mind. And when I got the email from him, I was like all excited. And he was like, oh, you're still interested. And I'm like, yes, 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 yes. And I told my wife and she's okay, I'll start packing so we can move. And he's like, no, you can work remote. And I'm like, oh, all right. So a lot of jobs are moving to working remote now. Um, it's become a more popular. As you know, I spend uh, you know a little over half my year uh, out of the country over in Asia. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's you can get away with, with doing a lot of work remotely these days. So, in fact, Dave, yeah. Dave's a contract yeah. for us. So, oh, really? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And you are so well, part, I'm in I'm in Northwest U.S. in Idaho. You're in Michigan, right? I'm in Michigan. Uh, I kind of bounce around between like Michigan, Florida, and and Asia. So. Yeah. And then Dave, you're down down under. Adelaide, South Australia. Mike. Yep. <laughs> so. Sorry, I'm drinking my water here. Oh, no, that's fine. Um, so I think that uh, since we're into the kind of the after after cast section here. Yeah, so if you stuck around the whole time. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, 
I mean, I think everybody here has a different reason for kind of being part of this. Uh, my reason was to try to build uh, more of a community around Delphi and a, a better sense of closeness within that community. Uh, I mean, ultimately, I would love to see us have enough of a following for this to be able to to put together some some actual in person conferences. You know, where we all go to Chicago and we all descend onto a barcade or something. Um, <laughs> but uh, but you know. Uh, the other reasons why is I, I felt that as I was on my quest to locate other people in the know, that there was, uh, like I had some information and other people wanted that information and then somebody else had some information and I would eventually get it and then disseminate it to other people. I'm like, okay, this, this isn't a good way to do this. We need to, we need to, we need to condense this into one place. And so I kind of wanted it to be a place where people can go to, and they can get kind of some direct facts about Delphi. I also wanted to equip people to be able to have the Delphi discussion to get around the things like, oh, Delphi, isn't that your granddaddy's programming language? <laughs> yeah, if you want my granddaddy to run over you with a steamroller while you're trying to figure out where your uses clause are. So, I mean, <laughs> uh, I mean that, and that's kind of the, you know, the purpose of it is, is to help people feel some pride in, in, in learning their new language and, and being able to uh, extend that knowledge so they get that same sensation that we get when we load up Delphi, which is that I am literally capable of anything with this tool. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I, so I had a Delphi podcast while I was running for a while, the podcast at Delphi.org, which I'm hopefully will be bringing back very soon. I'm not going to make any promises, but I have uh, plans and I've already started talking with some people about that. Maybe I'll have you guys on here as well. Uh, but uh, I've always enjoyed that kind of opportunity to connect with people and share things. I by no means consider myself to be like a, an expert on all things. I'm always learning new things. I think that's kind of the key, but I think that I can, uh, I was talking to Kerry Jensen and he said that presenting at a conference is a combination of skills. It's, being knowledgeable or at least able to learn about a, t a topic enough to have something to share with people, being able to communicate effectively about it and organize your thoughts in a way that can be, you can share that and then being willing to. And that last one's probably the biggest thing is that most people just aren't, don't want to, they aren't willing to. And so I'm like, well, I can do that. So that's kind of my excuse is I feel like I'm willing to do it. So I better do it. So that's why why I'm here. I just love uh, being part of this community and uh, love these development tools I get to use. Although, you know, my uh, job title is developer advocate and uh, engineer, software engineer, although I'm going to change it to software craftsman after Nick Hodges' uh, blog post <laughs> article wrote. Uh, but I don't get to spend as much time writing code as I'd like to, to be honest. Um, I, I enjoy everything I do. I enjoy the people I work with. I get to work with, you know, people like Zach and Dave all the time. And uh, that's fantastic. I wish I had more time to do work with all these amazing people. Um, but I spend a lot of time in PowerPoint or Google Slides or doing a spreadsheet or Photoshop or editing a webinar or whatever. So I spend a lot of time doing other things as well. Uh, so I like these ch chance for stuff like this where I get to connect with other developers that are developing, doing, you know, day-to-day -day development and you know sometimes like i spent some time with zach the other day we were trying to figure out a a weird behavior and oh, something yeah. diving cool. through the code together and doing that that was actually really fun you know just trying to figure out what's going on so that's you know kind of i learned from that though yeah i mean i'm serious my my debugging technique went up like four or five levels and then you add like dave nottage's tools <laughs> uh you know I, I i pulled in uh dave's uh Dave, when he did that, uh, one of the contracts for us, he was using his DW log. And uh, that was, it was neat because I grabbed it. And I'm like, oh, I wonder if this can help me. And the next thing I know, between Codex, which is also a Dave Nottage thing, and DW log, I'm over here rocking the house, figuring out, you know, how to get around all these things that, you know, these bugs that I basically crafted into my software. But I didn't even realize there were bugs until, you know, you went through it and you're like, oh, here's how you, how you go through and you do this. Let, let me show you how it's done, son. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I mean, it was a great experience. I, I'd love to do more of that kind of thing with other developers. Yeah. yeah. So, go ahead, Dave. 
that's the main reason why I uh, I became involved with this too, is because as you both know, I'm very community minded. I like to give a lot back, uh, share my knowledge around. And I saw this as a good way of doing that. And another reason is um, so I can beca become comfortable in front of the camera because I've had these plans for, for so long to do, uh, to do videos mm -hmm. and I just hadn't got around to it yet. And uh, when Zach um, gave me the idea of uh, doing this thing, jumped at it mm -hmm. because I saw it as a good way of doing that. And uh, yeah, and then of course, uh, get to uh, work with you know, two great guys like you two as well. So, <laughs> cool. Yeah. So, if somebody's got feedback or suggestions about what they'd like to see covered, they can email us, right, Zach? Yep. Mystics at Delphi Mystics? Yep. Mystics at Delphi Mystics.com. Yeah. And that, so that'll be our homepage. There's not much there now, but by the time you see this podcast, there should be. <laughs> oh, yeah, it should be fully equipped. So. And so, yeah, this is episode zero or episode one. Episode one, yeah, well, episode one. Pilot. Pilot. Well, I, yeah, I was going to say, I think, I think I called it episode zero in the notes just because okay. it's kind of like the intro episode. But, but yeah, it's, it's episode one. So this is kind of what we have in mind is that we're going to, you know, give you some, some news and some tips and then some conversations about what's going on and what you need to know uh, to help you out with keep on top of things. The is, I mean, I could wax philosophical. I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> you're, 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 hard, you're having trouble biting, biting your tongue out. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just going to talk about how stuff changes so fast. It's hard oh, to keep yeah. on top of everything. And even if you feel like that's your full-time job, you still can't keep on top of everything. No, so no. it was interesting, actually, when I was working with you, Zach, because you're like, oh, we could use that tool Dave made. And I'm like, well, I know Dave Nottage. I didn't know he made this tool, you know. And you're like, oh, yeah, you fire it up. And I'm like, oh, that's really cool. And so I'm emailing Dave. I'm like, hey, Dave, that's a great tool. I didn't know you made that. So, you know, yeah. I, it, it's, it's great getting a chance to talk to people and discover tools you're not aware of. So I guess next week we need to talk more about the tools you're working on, Dave, because we've been talking. Yeah, about yeah definitely. Well, you know, and you, when you emailed Dave, I got an email that was, thanks for leaking my tool, man. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 no, he was, uh, I think he was pretty happy about it. So. Oh, yeah. All right. all right. Well, that's it. We're going to sign off now. I'm sure we could just sit here jabbering all day, but uh, you've, uh, do you guys ever listen to Car Talk? No. Oh, it was a radio program. It was about automotive cars, and I did not, I do not care about cars whatsoever, but the guys that ran it, Click and Clack, the Clamp Tab Brothers, I don't know what their names were. Anyway, at the end of the podcast, or the uh, radio show, they always like, actually it became a podcast later. Um, now I said, well, you just wasted another, another hour with us, <laughs> but it was, it was actually a phenomenal show. Um, the occasionally like celebrities would call in just to ask automotive questions. These guys were brilliant. Um, uh, anyway, so I was going to say something like you wasted your time with us, but I don't, hopefully you didn't feel like it was a waste of time. No, hopefully, uh, hopefully we're adding to people. So yeah. yeah. Awesome. All right. Catch you next time. Take care, everybody. Bye.